Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sane, and I am going to continue my little series of the early game maddening guide for Fire Emblem Three Houses, specifically going over the first five chapters or so. Uh, this guy is really focusing on telling you, kind of helping you out with those first chapters, um, coaching you through how you should take your characters, what you should do with your characters, how you should really approach the very beginning of the game. Uh, considering that you're playing on maddening mode with no new game plus, such as fresh file, and with DLC, although DLC doesn't really impact the classes all that much. Um, after the first five chapters, you have a lot of flexibility on what you want to do, and so I also throw in a little bit of a recommendation on what you should do for the end of the game, what you should do for probably the rest of the game, uh, what classes you should probably take these characters into, um, some of their best classes and stuff like that. But this guide is really focused on those first five chapters, getting you through the absolute monster that is Fire Emblem Three Houses Maddening Mode, the early game. So let's get into it. So first off is Claude. <laughs> I thought I wasn't gonna laugh looking at this picture, but I did it. He, <laughs> he should definitely focus bows throughout the entire game, especially early on. He comes with Curve Shot. Um, you should focus bows so you get your bow prowess up so he's got better hit rates. Um, he gets a monster blast at C+, which is really going to help you on Chapter 5 against Sylvain's older brother when he turns into a monster. Um, and he turns into the beast. He gets very easy access into Archer to get hit plus 20. He also has a button talent and axes and can get pretty easily trained in axes um, so that he can get death blow. He gets diamond axe from his budding talent in axes, so I don't think it's necessarily worth it. You can go for it if you want to. I think you just focus him on his... Uh, bows. Let him shoot from a distance with bows. He's going to do a lot of damage for you. Uh, end game, he has a super easy path into Sniper for Hunter's Folly, as well as Barbarossa. Um, he's got really good combat art, like an enclosure for his bows, so he's going to be super, super good. Um, Barbarossa, he's got he's going to have bow fair while also flying around, and it's crazy good class. He's super coolest class in the game. He's the coolest lord. Yeah, he's super, super good. He also has a super easy path into a pretty easy path into Wyvern Lord. He had to train lances up a bit, but he's got again he's got a really easy path into flying. Um, axes aren't an issue for him, so if you want to use him as more of a frontliner, you can do Wyvern Lord. Um, you can let him be a Wyvern Rider at least for a little bit before he before the time skip if you really want him to be. Um, I think your time is probably best off in Sniper. Just use Hunter's Volley for a while. Keep getting his bow fair up. Keep getting his bow rank up. Yeah, Claude, super, super good unit. Amazing. Gotta love Josija. Lawrence. Now, Lawrence is an interesting one. Overall, I don't think Lawrence is something is someone you want to keep around for the entire game, um, but you can do a couple different builds with him. Uh, beginning, I would, I would recommend using him with just lances, focusing his lances. He comes with Tempest Lance. He can also get Night, Night Kneeler um, to help against uh, Lord Lenato and other Cavaliers Paladins. He also does get Frozen Lance, which hits for resistance. It counts as a magic attack, and it goes off of how much dexterity you have. Uh, it takes it uses dexterity as the attack stat, so that can be really useful for blowing up enemies early game. Um, he also can just get Fire. You can also just make him into a mage. He can be a very solid mage. Um, take him into the mage class so he can get Phoenix Blow. Take him into Dark Mage so he can get Poison Strike. He can be very good for just chip damage. Um, or you can take him into Paladin. Um, just let him use Frozen Lance, pretty much spam Frozen Lance. Would be his best bet. Um, so I would, I would recommend definitely take him into Dark Knight if you want to just use him for magic. He can do very well as chip damage in that class. Otherwise, Paladin, if you want him to be in a physical class. He can be a dancer as well. He could be a decent dancer as well, but... Overall, like, he's, he's, he starts to fall off. He kind of is in this awkward spot where he's so... Like average at everything he's so like decent at everything that he doesn't really do anything super super well but early game you know very solid tempest lance and frozen lance can do a lot of damage early game as well and you can also just you can you can take him to, ma to magic if you want to um he can do some good chip damage from afar that way but yeah i'd, I'd recommend i'd recommend lances at first Next up is Raphael. Now, Raphael, I'm going to say, is honestly probably the worst character in the game. Or at least, worst student in the game. Um, he doesn't have staunch shield like the Dew has. And Caspar at least has a better 
stat grows later on. Well, Raphael just has really bad stat grows and a bad ability and stuff like that. Um, so honestly, I would just say take him into Brawl. I think his, he's, his niche is that he can take a couple scary hits like pretty early, but then I've like in the first like the very first two chapters or so but then he's gonna start falling off pretty quickly so what i would recommend is just he has fading blow originally so I, he or at base he has fading blow um so you can use that to deal some damage and then back off so somebody else can come in and do some good damage he also gets rushing blow so you can deal some damage and then go past them and uh maybe set up to be a wall for the next enemy that's going to come by so that your other units can finish them off. Um, but overall, it's just not that great. You could definitely use take him to axes so he can get smash and helm splitter. That might that is another really really easy path for him. Um, but I I just personally recommend brawl. He also gets monster crusher, which is going to help you against Sylvain's little brother. I recommend brawl because he doesn't really you don't really need to spend any time. You don't really need to waste any time on him to get him into to get him brawling. Uh, skill level up just because he's he, he's so not worth your time and there's so many other units in the golden deer house specifically and just in any other house that are so much more worth your time and your in your early game uh, meal times and instructing lessons like you don't you don't really want to waste one of your three or four instructs instruction times on Raphael there's so many better units so, he can turn into a guard adjutant or easily by making him a brawler or a, war, or a grappler or fortress knight, brigand. Fortress knight, sorry, not a brigand. Armor knight, whatever you want. Um, he does have ac early access to brigand, so he can get death blow. For end game, I would just say grappler or fortress knight. You could do war master too. Grappler or war master or fortress knight. Make him a guard adjutant. Pretty much the same thing as I said for it to do in the, in the blue lions part. Um, he can be a decent option to hold choke points. I think he would definitely need to be a fortress knight to not get beat up as much. Unlike to do who's got a little bit more flexibility into grappler and in, at least in my opinion, just because it's not a shield. But yeah, overall not a very good unit. He, he can he can very easily get into guard adjutant, which is a very good, which is in my opinion the best adjutant form of between attack, healing, and guard. Guard is the best, but he is. I think he's the ultimate bench warmer. You just you you want to ditch him pretty early on. It, he's not worth your time. But at least early on, I mean, you can do some stuff with fading blow, rushing blow, and monster crusher can be helpful. Next, next up is Ignatz. Now Ignatz is actually really useful early game because he already has hit plus twenty. He comes with a built-in hit plus twenty. Uh, you can get him archer to get another hit plus twenty and get hit plus forty. I believe they if they stack I, I'm actually not sure on that one I I can't remember off the top of my head I think they can but it's also like not I guess not the most useful investment of your time but you know whatever he can he can always guarantee hit I guess but yeah, coming coming with hit plus 20 is just super super good um, he comes with curve shot as well so he yeah he's gonna be able to hit from a distance super reliably he gets break shot too which will lower their attack by five um, and then he also gets really really good rallies pretty early on. He gets rally speed, which will help you double and not get doubled. He also helps gets rally dexterity at C plus authority, which will just help accuracy overall for a lot of the characters. So his rally bot potential is super, super solid. And he gets rally strength at A authority. So if you just keep him on as a rally bot, he performs, I think, just as good of a rally bot as Annette does. Um, although Annette has a better early game for rally botting. In endgame, I think just stick to his bows, stick to his authority. I think just get his authority up as fast as possible, so get to get his bows up as fast as possible. Um, get him into sniper so that he can just use Hunter's Volley um, for any kind of damage you want. If you want to get him into dark, if you want to make him a dark mage just for a little bit, so, just so he can get poison strike, um, that could be worthwhile. So he does a little bit more chip damage. Um, also, giving him getting him into brigand is going to be worthwhile. So his, he gets death blow. Time to do more damage. You could also make him a bow knight to make him a little bit better of a rally bot. He could do, I think he's going to work out a little bit better as a rally bot and bow knight just so he's got canto and higher movement. But uh, yeah, he's I, I say he's pretty much like a physical Annette overall. He's got really good rally abilities, can just be reliable chip damage early on. 
Uh, I'd say a little bit better reliable chip damage early on than a net, but it also doesn't get healing or anything like that. You could also make him, you could easily make him a magic class if you wanted to, because he does get physic. Um, so instead of using bows, you could use magic if you want. I don't think that really utilizes hit plus 20 and early game. That's not something I'd really recommend as much. I think you should just stick to bows. Uh, but you can use magic if you want to. You can get away with it. Um, early game at least. As long, I think as long as you focus your rallies, that's really where his use is going to come is come from. Is giving rally speed. At least rally speed. Rally decks, you know, you might take you a little bit longer to get that. But getting rally speed early on is going to be super useful. Next up is Lysithia, the super, super stupid crazy one. <laughs> she comes with Miasma, she gets Swarm, which lowers attack. Which lowers the enemy's attack, so that's useful. And then she also gets Seraphim at Sea Faith, um, so she can do extra damage to monsters when you fight Sylvain's older brother. Easy access to Fiendish Blow, eventually she gets Warp. She gets Dark Death, death Spikes to Dark Spikes to obliterate the death knight she's super good i don't feel like i don't need to say much about her just let her go with her magic don't do anything you don't don't waste your time with swords uh just let her go with her magic she very easily gets into grimmery she also makes a fantastic valkyrie valkyrie's super gross class for her offensively so yeah super super fantastic unit she's so good next up is Mer not Merced, marianne who is pretty much going to be your Mercedes at the Golden Deer route, just your main healer. Um, she comes with Heal and Osferatu. She gets Physic at C rank. She also does get Silence later on, um, so if you really want to focus her Faith and not really let her... You can get her to D Reason and for Blizzard just so she can do a little bit of damage, and then you can focus her Faith to get her Silence early on. That'll help her out. I'm in Support category. Shut down some enemy mages, because mage, enemy mages can do a lot of damage. Um, she gets very easily gets Fiendish Blow as Mage in Endgame. I think she just best fits into Grimmery or Bishop. Um, could do something. Yeah, Grimmery Bishop is really going to help you out with heat with your healing ability, like Physic, and getting more he Physic uses, as well as more Silence uses. So you can actually use Silence more if you wanted to. Um, she does get some pretty decent attack spells too. So if you wanted to really make her offensive, she very easily gets into Dark Flyer. Uh, but otherwise, you can make her. She's a really good dancer. She can use Sword of Void with her uh, heroes, were like Blute Gang. Um, also, use. I think she gets Hexblade. She gets Hexblade or Soulblade, or maybe both. So she can do magic damage with swords. You give her 11 swords like that. That could be a decent choice as a dancer. Uh, and then she can use Sword of Void as well. Uh, as well as use Physic to heal from afar. But other, over, otherwise, I think she's pretty much better off as just a healer unit. Uh, but Dark Flyer and Dancer are there for other uses. Let's I'd say more if you recruit another healer like Mercedes or Landheart, um, or if you're recruiting her into a different house and you need another attack magic, an attack mage, or maybe an attack and uh, support mage, something like that. So she's pretty flexible when it comes to magic. But I think early game you definitely just early game you definitely want to focus her faith magic, get her physic, let her just heal and heal your allies up as as much as possible early game. Because you could take a lot, a lot of damage. And then Blizzard can be nice, just so she has some chip damage option. Because Nosferatu is not very good for attack magic. Hilda, Hilda, Hilda. Hilda, pretty much like Sylvain, I'm gonna, I would recommend you use Axes and Lances. She comes with Smash, and she quickly gets Helm Splitter. And then when she gets to C+, for Axes, she gets Spike, which isn't as good of a combat art. While with Lances, at C+, plus Lance, she gets Shatter Slash, which uh, gives the enemy minus 5 defense. That can be really useful, um, especially against like bosses. Shatter Slash is a very useful combat art, so Lance can definitely be worth your while. You don't have to. If you, if you want to just go Axes and get her ready, get her Spike, and just use your Axes up, that's fine. To. You don't necessarily have to use lances. I think definitely use axes. Um, she does, she will get tempest lance with that, so that could be useful for her too. Um, I think she with smash she's gonna be fine. And helm splitter is a little bit better than night kneeler because she will get night kneeler as well. But yeah, I think shatter slash is really the combat art that 
is use uh, is is worthwhile for her getting lances for. It's just very very useful. She's got super easy path into Brigham to get death blow. She also has a super easy path into getting Pe into Pegasus Knight, so she can get darting blow. So you can pretty much start her off as Brigham super early, let her master that, get death blow, then take her to Pegasus Knight, get her more speed, and get her darting blow, and get her flying up, and then you can take her into Wyvern Rider, and then one to Wyvern Lord, and she, I think, just absolutely always recommend taking her to Wyvern Lord, she's so, so good in that. You can give her heavy armor to get her, um, she gets seal, I believe she gets seal speed, which isn't super worth it, because heavy armor, I don't think it's worth was wasting your time turning her in heavy armor. She would also get weight minus three, but again, I also don't think that's really much worth your time. I think just give her darting blow, let her be a Pegasus Knight for a bit so she can increase her speed. And then yeah, finish her off in Wyvern Lord. Uh, you can definitely make her a Falcon Knight too. I think Wyvern Lord would be better just so she can get, um, just to really min-max her speed, or, or not her speed, her strength, really max out her strength. Um, but she does work very well as a Falcon Knight too, so. Let's, I guess if you if you have too many axe users on your team or something and you want her to be a lance user or really want to just focus on her speed and get rid of axe fair, you can make her a falcon knight and she performs very solidly as well. Next up is Leone. Last up, I guess, is Leone. Leone is, again, another one that I think, just like Hilda, you should definitely invest into a lot at the beginning um, to get a lot of different combat arts. Leone is very good with bows and lance, so she can be up front. She has a lot of speed, so she most likely won't be getting doubled as well. She's got good defense growth. So like Sylvain, she can be a really good physical unit early on. Um, but she also has super easy access to getting bow combat arts, just like Felix, pretty much. And just, they're just super useful. She's super useful hitting from afar with like curve shot. You can get her curve shot which is super easy with D because she starts with E plus bows. So very easily get her curve shot. Uh, if you want to keep going with her bows, you can get her break shot, which will uh, reduce the attack as it gives minus a five attack to enemies when they get hit by break shot. So that's easy chip damage, debuff some enemies. She also gets monster piercer at C plus for lance. Um, that is going to really help you out against Sylvain's older brother. She'll get night kneeler as well, which can help against Lunado. But I think if you had to pick three combat arts, I think the best would be some kind of combination of these, of Curve Shot, Tempest Lance, Break Shot, and Monster Piercer. Yeah, she she gets a lot of good combat, a lot of good combat arts. She has also super easy access into Archer to get hit plus 20. Uh, hit plus 20 is going to help you with your accuracy early game. Um, she can get into she can get into Brigand fine because she doesn't have she doesn't have a strength or weakness in axes, so if you, it's worthwhile to just train the axes up just so you can get into Brigand. Um, she can also get into Pegasus Knight pretty easily. Uh, she's going to learn lances pretty quickly. And learning flying, she she learns flying pretty easily. So giving her darting blow can be really, really useful too. Overall, she's just got super, a lot of really good classes she can get into. And then for end game, I would recommend taking her one of two things. I think you should take her, let her go all the way with bows. She gets uh, point blank volley. And you can let her be a sniper, so she's got both Point Blank and Hunter's Volley. Um, or you can take her Bow Knight and let her just use Point Blank Volley while on horseback. horseback. Uh, let her use Kanto. You can still give her a Lance if you want to. She can definitely be like a hybrid unit with Bows who also has a Lance or something. Or if you just really want to focus her Lance, or you can make her a, a Flying Archer. Take her Pegasus Knight and Falcon Knight. She works very well in that class too. She she's super flexible. She can she can easy, very easily be a sniper or a falcon knight, whatever you want to make her. Literally, it's whatever you want to make her. It's whatever role you need her to fill on your team. Uh, for my blue lions run, I need another archer, so I'm recruiting her, and she's gonna be a sniper bow knight for me, and she's gonna fill a super good archer role. Um, but when I play through golden deer, I'm gonna make her a falcon knight, so I can have another lance user. Uh, she's gonna be my main. She's gonna be my main lance user. Use tempest lance. A uh, lot of, and make her a Falcon Knight, Pegasus Knight. Yeah, she's she's super flexible as a physical unit. I'd say she's more flexible than Sylvain actually, and even like Ferdinand, um, just because she can like go with bows or lances. She could be up front 
or she can be kind of shooting from behind, um, doing some good chip damage from afar, or just even killing things from afar. So, yeah, Leonie, super, super good unit. Definitely worth your time. Uh, definitely, definitely worth worth investing a lot of time into early game, like giving, instructing her every dime, giving, taking her to, or giving her meals so she has maximum. Uh, what's the what's the word? Whatever, whatever you need for training her. I'm spacing it out right now. Enth not enthusiasm, but yeah, whatever, whatever you need to, whatever you use up when you're training them or instructing them. Um, it's definitely worth investing a lot of time into her because she can just be really, really helpful and carry you through early game. So that's going to do it for the Golden Deer section. Night the last video is going to be Ashen Wolves as well as Byleth because I realize I haven't covered Byleth yet. So yeah. Hope you guys like these videos. If you haven't, if you haven't yet, go check out the Black Eagles and Blue Lions videos I posted earlier. Um, I hope this, I hope this guide is going to be helpful for all of you because early game of Madding is just so difficult, and this guide, not only like following all these steps, not only helped me in early game, um, but just I, I feel like, really is. A nice highlight for just the first five chapters of maddening mode where a lot of other guides will just tell you like specific tips and strategies but don't really give you numbers give you like in writing what you should do so i hope this helps you guys yeah i'll see you in the next part of the video